Hey, everybody. It's Eileen, good to see you all. How's everyone doing today? Let's see who's here. All right, we've got Janie Jane, Karen, Charlotta, Laura, Janie Jane again. We're just chatting in there. Hey, Teresita and Elaine. Everybody. Elaine, the, ooh, ooh. Eileen, good to see you all. How's everyone doing there? today? Can you guys hear me? Oh, my Lord. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Hello? You hear me in the echo. I don't understand why that would be there. Wait a minute. Let me... Maybe my phone. Do you hear an echo now? The echo stopped. All right. I don't know what that was. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, Crafty Carousel. Jill. Brenda. Teresita. I saw you before. I don't know if you heard me. Hi, Stephanie. Cindy. Good to see everybody. Marianne. That's my daughter's name is Marianne, too. She just has an E at the end. But it's amazing how many spellings of Marianne there is. Hi, Robin. All right, good to see everybody. We have such a treat for you today. Um, first, there I just have a couple announcements before we get going, and I introduce our guest. But uh, just a couple things about Bellicon. It's what is today the twenty sixth, so it's less than a month away. Anne is getting ready to leave to go to Texas. So this is my announcement. If anybody wants to order the swag, if you want to sign up for the uh, virtual retreat, it's February 23rd to the 25th. There are a couple prices. One is if you want the swag, which is worth $200 or more, because uh, she's still getting, I guess she's done getting stuff, but, you know, it's $200. There's also the two and a half day retreat that comes with it, and it comes to 127 so you can go for that um, retreat and get the swag bag for 127 but it today is the last chance to order it because Anne is getting ready to leave. So, oh good, Laura, you signed up. Excellent. Oh, there's Anne. Free shipping for U.S. I'm freezing up on your end. Oh, you might want to refresh, Judy. Oh, good. All right. Anne's got the link in there. Very good. Okay. Originally, it was... Often Marianne, Marianne, ah, uh, hey Jenny, oh well good, I'm glad you're here, and you're, we're live, there's Joyce, Lisa, okay, and don't forget, we have a new post up, all right, Glum may or may not be able to watch the video, okay, we'll see, all right, we'll see, see what can happen, all right, Glum, they should just let you do whatever you want, <laughs> hi Mitziana, hi Michelle, so anyway, let, that's the announcement about, about Bellicon. We're going to have the kits posted. I have posted one. I'm working on the second one, and I will get it up as soon as I can. It will be in my Etsy shop. They're inexpensive. They're $15, but I don't want anybody not to be able to take a class. So if you don't have the die, you don't have a wide Big Shot uh, Plus or, or um, Switch, then you can buy the kit and have what you need to do it. You'd need things like glue and Mod Podge and stuff like that. I'm not going to ship that. But um, anyway, the new post is almost up. Okay. <laughs> Check it out. Lisa's here. So we'd rather hear, have her here with us. We'll, we can read that later. But there are going to be lots of new um, projects from this release. So you want to go and check that out. Okay. The second thing is the ATC card swap. How's everybody doing with that? Are we coming along? Is everybody comfortable? Are you chatting with your partners? I hope so. I I had a nice chat with mine, and I'm working on mine. I did want to show you. I made three ATC cards the other night. <laughs> so proud of myself. Here's the one that I torturously did in my live. <laughs> it was fun. And here's another one that I was just playing around. So they're all different, but you could crank them out if you wanted to do a lot. 
Anyway, can't get YouTube to work on big screen. That is okay. I am large enough, Karen Cartland. <laughs> You're good on the swap, almost ready to go. Okay, I know a lot of you are ready. And so I did uh, get that album up in the Eileen Hall fan club. That's where the swap is taking place. So go ahead over there, and when you're ready, you can post your pictures, either of what you're sending or what you're getting or both. I know. It is a rabbit hole, and you could see from that video. It was ridiculous. I watched it. It's like, oh, would you just make something? I was driving myself insane. But anyway, then I thought, no, I'm just sitting here and doing it, and I did. So <laughs> it can be done. Apparently not in front of you, though. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all right. Um, okay. And the last thing I wanted to do was, I don't know if Jess is in our group, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody who watched Create and Craft yesterday. Jess did a great job. It was the first time she had done uh, one with my dyes. And I think she really did a great job. And um, hey, Alice Walls, college roommate. <laughs> Hi, Mary Beth. All right, Laura is working on her ATCs, which means she's playing on her ATCs, which is good. That's what we're doing here. Hey, Cindy. So, um, okay, she's looking for, all right, Jenny. Well, all right, I think that's all I wanted to say. But I um, thank you to everybody who was thinking. And thank you for your nice comments and stuff about mom. Let me just tell you what's happening. It's fine today. Um Apparently the other day she was talking to the nurse and he went down the stairs and she followed him. She lives on the second floor, followed him with her walker and they all went nuts and, you know, didn't want her to fall. I don't think she really would have done it because I think she would have realized, but I don't know. I wasn't there. So I got a phone call. And then the next day I had to go in and it was like go to the principal's office and talk about mom. And anyway, we had to move her to the first floor. We're having a talk in my family about possibly having her go stay with my sister. So it was just a lot of stuff. And anyway, I, it was kind of emotional. So anyway, I just couldn't talk about it. It's nothing bad. She's fine, but you know, so just thank you for all of your kind messages. I just haven't had time. We, I had to move her in today. That's why I'm in my sweatshirt. I was moving all her stuff and trying to get it comfy again. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's happening in my life. I'm happy to have Jenny here. All right. So we are going to have Jenny and she is going to come. And I know that you guys saw because there was a lot of attention over the accordion, uh, kind of a pocket uh, I don't know what we call it, but anyway, it, it can hold a lot of assorted little goodies. It's got dividers in it. So Jenny has been, um, she's got a video for us. And then at the, after we watch that, we're going to, uh, have question and answer. If you have any questions, it's a very thorough video. So I am mom is adventurous. <laughs> yes. Anyway, let me introduce Jenny and add her in here. All right, let's see. There she is. Hi, Jenny. They're right. Your mum is adventurous. Yeah, I know. A little <laughs> too much. She's an independent spirit. <laughs> she is, but I mean, the thing is, she might not have meant to do that, you know, and they just, ha they have to be careful. So this whole thing happened because of that. Anyway, it's fine. And she's fine and everything. So we're just going to keep going. Okay. The accordion file is a frame pocket journal. Thank you, Glum. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Jenny, what do you call that project? An expanding file folder. Expanding file folder. Okay. Do you have it right on hand to show us what it looks like? Isn't that beautiful? So just exactly how you do the, the journal. Mm -hmm. so exactly the same but then when you open it up you can cram it full of That's stuff all the goodies yeah so yeah it's, yeah it's beautiful and then also the embossing oh look at that yep. yeah it's so, beautiful yeah 
Well, when we posted that, there were a lot of people wanted to know how you did it. You did do a tutorial, right? I did. So, yeah. So tell us all the stuff's on the blog. Yes. Yeah, so um, the tutorial with all the measurements and the photos and the explanations are all on um, my blog, which is pushingtherightbuttons.blogspot.com. Um, so that tells you how to make the folder itself. Um, but then you were asking about the decorative paper. So that kind of that's that's the embossed part mm -hmm. um, that becomes a whole other thing. So um, I've put together we talked about it in the live. You said maybe I could do a video. So that's exactly what I've done. Yep. So I show the very basics at the beginning of this video. You'll see I go through the basics of, of putting the file folder together. Um, but none of the measurements, you have to kind of go to the blog for that. Yeah. Um, and then I show you my <laughs> my chaotic creative process. I felt like Karen Beers. I was channeling my inner Karen um, as I as I made some some embossed paper. She would so love you can see it a lot more. It doesn't look like much here. It looks like it really does look like a worn out tablecloth. It looks um, <laughs> It's, I like it's, how that looks. It's just dodgy watercolor paper that was very cheap. Um, but yeah, had an awful lot of fun. But the whole lot's in the video. Um, but what we'll do is we'll hang around until the end of it. And then if you've got any questions whatsoever, um, save them all up. And yeah, I can answer everything as to the best of my abilities at the end. You made it. So you know better than anybody. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. That is the exact. Oh, there's Kathleen. She says that's the exact information she needed. Okay. And Glum has left a link to Jenny's uh, blog. So that's Thank good. You. you can go over there later and get that when you go to make yours. So everyone has the numbers. Um, Laura says she has a bunch of that wa dodgy watercolor paper. It's the kind to experiment with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So good. All right. Well, let's get into it. All right. Let me put the. I'm going to warn you, it's going to start right away. Okay. But uh, here we go. Okay. See you after it's done. Um, Eileen's asked me to put together a video tutorial to show you how I created the embossed decorative paper for this expanding file folder. But I thought I would start by showing you around the file folder itself and also giving a very basic how-to on the construction of it. Um, so this is actually on a blog post uh, which should be live on my blog right now pushingtherightbuttons.blogspot.com so please do head on over there because it gives you a full tutorial um, and shows you how I created the actual um, folder itself you'll see if i just undo it how this is using eileen's frame pocket journal so it's the latest in her journal dies and it's i thought it was perfect for this use because it's a, a wraparound style um so which makes it perfect for then enclosing all your bits and pieces um, and inside you can see it expands to hold all those extra die cuts and look there's even a, a mini book from ages ago a cover for that your stamped bits your embossed bits all those oh i've even got some of the um these are the little um snippets that i made some while ago so i've got a bunch of those made up in there um the embossed handles that i did for a video tutorial um way back as part of the comfort and joy series so there's all sorts of bits and pieces that i've been collecting um as i've finished projects and i've had leftovers so it's an ideal way to store those um so that i know exactly where they are which is kind of helpful especially in my craft room so it's a very easy thing to put together to be honest let's start by showing you the Oh, I think I just knocked that, sorry. Um, so this is the, the basic outer and it is just the file, uh, the um, frame pocket journal cover. Um, that's all it is. 
um, you can see you've got the two uh, bases and then there's the little flap piece at this end um, I've you you'll see normally you would see score lines here and little holes all the way along score lines and little holes on these pieces I've actually covered those up with strips um, one and one eighth inch strips of the same card that I've used for the file folder um, both inside and out because I didn't want anything dropping through but also because it then gives it three layers at the top and bottom just to give it extra strength and just as a guide for this I've used 350 GSM craft card um, that equates to about 130 pounds I believe in the US so it's pretty sturdy um, definitely not it's more than Sizzix weight I would say um, because you really need it to sort of hold together um, and hold firmly um, but that does really nicely I suspect feeling the weight of this do you know it might be worth having a play with um, things like cereal packets because those have got to remain sturdy so they might do really well for this um, and obviously you can then cover them or paint them or whatever and, and disguise them closures um, in the previous one I used um, like the f normal file folder enclosures um, the holes with the uh, grommets through with this I've just used a couple of buttons one at the top and one at the bottom and the piece of string so that when it folds together it can do its usual thing of being tied round and I add those while the folder is still flat because it's just an awful lot easier than trying to fiddle around when it's then constructed. The inside, again, straightforward, and all these dimensions are on my blog post, all the all the bits and pieces you'll need to know. So I've got two strips, which I've concertinaed, just regular mountain valley folds. Um, it's a four inches by eight inches strip, I believe, and they are half inch folds. Um, concertina together um, one on each side and then I've got um, little inserts there so these are just rectangles of card um, again four inches by just under six and a half I believe and those have been stuck down to the um, the concertina section so you'll see I've stuck them at the second valley, the fourth valley and the sixth valley to leave space either side so that your pockets remain wide. And also, I hope you can see there, they're only stuck to one side of the concertina. If I'd stuck them down on both sides and done that on all three, you, see, you would see that there would be far less expansion room. Um, you'd actually contract the amount of space available inside. So that's what I've done there. And then to construct, it is simply a case of, I've used double-sided tape here. Um, and it's, it's then just a case of taking your tape and see if we can do this. So I'm not going to peel it all the way down because then that gives me a little bit of wiggle room so I take it right to the end of the back of the file folder so just sticking that down on there so that's the back portion and then I can remove the rest of the tape and stick that down in place and then I'll do the same on this side so again I find it helps if you only remove half of it because then you can move it around on the part that isn't stuck down until you're happy with its positioning so let's get that in place so that's done and Got that. Oh, no. You see what I mean? So that should be against this base there, not against the top. 
there we go there we are and then take that out and stick that down firmly so now that's stuck down on that side and that side and that's against the base and then you just flip it round and do the same thing and this time I'm gonna risk it with doing both of them at the same time because what you can do is bring your You bring your folder in actually let's just do this one at a time it is easier so stick that down as far as it will go there what's that pull that up there so slightly there we go so that's that one stuck down and then do the other one i'm just gonna let's go for it with this one not the easiest whilst on camera it's a lot easier when you're able to put your head right over the top of it and just stick that down in place and there we go right and then there you have your file folder it's as easy as that so as i said don't forget you've got your full instructions are available right now on my blog for that basic construction and then you can just do that up and it actually is better when it is full of all your fabulous Eileen bits and pieces which you can then save and you've got hold of and you can use for example for making ATCs for all of those who are taking part in the ATC challenge so that's that part the second part Eileen wanted to show me to show you is the uh, the tablecloth so the decoration so um, yeah, we're going to have a bit of fun with this because you never know how it's going to turn out in truth <laughs> so we'll start off with other than of course it's eileen's folder so it's going to look beautiful so we're starting off right this may look like a proper piece of pattern paper but actually all it is is a piece of it well it's very very inexpensive watercolor card and I put a layer of paint down on a um, a gel plate and tried to pull and it actually came up with a pile of white. Some of the paint came off, some of it came up not so great. Um, I've never got around to using it either and I just thought, well, it's ridiculous sitting there. So let's have a bash at altering this. As I said, this is always a case of just have a play, see what happens. What's the worst? You can paint over it. Um, it's it's never going to be that bad so what I'm doing first of all just to show you and you'll see I do keep my um, gel plates a bit messy because I like to leave them like that and then pull them and I get lovely worn wallpaper looks from them sort of those you know the, the flaky old um, plaster work and decades of paint on them and all of that that's just something I love the look of so I'm just going over with um, this is a, a paper artsy paint so this one in case anyone's interested it's this is verdigris um, really loving this particular range there's a whole um, set of six of them in in varying shades and these greens are beautiful um, we've got the look of verdigris about them so i'm just putting down a layer of color and it doesn't matter if it is blotchy or not because everything is going to get covered up suggestion if you don't happen to have a scrap of paper like this sitting around have you got some scrapbook paper 
that you really didn't it was one of those in the set that you really didn't like a great deal and it's kind of still sitting there so just grab it out and put paint on it um or ink on it or something on it even if you put gesso on it um you, you'll be amazed and actually tea staining is another good idea because that way you're making a color shift to your paper and you might find that you prefer it a lot more and again if in doubt just put a bit of paint on it this one's sand so a completely different color that i'm sticking on top and again this is just all about being thoroughly random so i'm not looking for perfection by any means i just want kind of a blotchy worn look to the whole thing and also bear in mind once you've embossed this a fair bit of this background is actually going to end up disappearing you won't see it because the pattern will really be in front but I would say if you don't do anything underneath or if you haven't got a patterned paper underneath then it's going to look an awful lot plainer you do notice just even the slightest bits of background um, and what you can do on these then is you can have fun stamping um, doing all sorts of fun things with it um, I'll tell you what I will do I have got some gold um, this is one of Seth Apter's I Zinc die sprays I love these because they they don't clog which is helpful um, the color stays beautiful you can see this is the this is gold mine and yeah you can tell packed full of mica but also they dry quite fast which if you're an impatient person like me is always very useful now what, what I'm going to do rather than spray I'm going to splatter and just use the and it doesn't matter if they're you get larger splatters and smaller splatters again it's going to get covered up when you emboss to a certain degree um, so just splattering away if you've got your eileen inks as well um, you can you her, her old color box blends um, and you've got the the re-inkers you could always grab some of those i would say make sure particularly if you're using the metallics um, you might need to blot them to get them to dry more effectively because they do um, they take a little while to dry on those but if you're just having set aside a play day just to make paper or alter paper and make it the way you'd like it um, and, and that way time doesn't matter quite so much okay so I'm going to dry this with my heat gun and then I'm going to pop it through the um, with the tablecloth embossing folder which is just to this side so that's this one um, let me open it out and you can see there it's a, the 3D embossing folder Sizzix embossing folder um, so the and it's it's beautiful they have gone to the extent of all of these bits it's not just simple patterning that actually has the weave within it as well I mean I, I don't quite know how they do it but it's extraordinary detail um, and absolutely beautiful so I'm going to dry this I will emboss with this um, just because cranking backwards and forwards I'm going to shake the table and then you'll have a wobbly video um, and then I'll be back to show you what else we're going to do with this paper okay so I'm back and this has all been embossed I haven't lined it up as brilliantly as Susie did on her amazing scrapbook layout page um, but that's fine because it gets chopped up so all is good um, and yep yeah, just run it through make sure that you have the the words Eileen Hull Sizzix showing at the top when you're running it through because that way you will have the raised pattern will be on the surface rather than underneath your card okay so that's that's just one handy hint 
from somebody who's done it the wrong way around on countless times. Okay, so so now we've got our embossed card and it looks okay, it's all right, but you know, let's see if we can go for it. Um, now going back to the original, I'd got kind of muted colours underneath that you can see if I bring it up close, you can see this bits of blue and this some of those bits of gold and I'd gone for far more muted browns and and things with just highlights of turquoise in there yeah, a bit meh so I, I went over with red um, and then panicked <laughs> so but I'll show you how I did that this time um, I'm using yeah it's it's that luminous it's bluebird um, it's an archival link, so one of Ranger's archival links. Now, this is just in my experience how this happens, okay? Um, so you'll, you get your own experimentations with however you want to do. Now, you could just flat out um, um, use your brayer um, and just put paint and go over the raised sections and you can do that. That's cool. Um, I quite like to go in flat with an ink pad. And you'll see the, as I'm rubbing it over, how the pattern then starts to show through. So we've got some more of that real aqua colour that I know Eileen is a huge fan of. So a bit of ink pad there. Again, not to worry. Again, there's creases in this paper and all sorts from where it's been left sitting for for forever. But again, that doesn't matter because once I have added the ink and other stuff, and then I'm chopping it up anyway, um, it really doesn't matter. So now you can see this is how that pattern is now coming through. You can really get a sense of it. And it's nice to get colours that contrast with the background but do kind of work relatively harmoniously. So I could have used a green on top of here. I probably wouldn't use something like orange or, and I definitely wouldn't use purple because I know it's Eileen's nemesis, but anyway, there we are. Just get a final bit down on there. As I said, there, you can see now how that pattern has really come to life a whole heap more, but it's definitely got darker. And if at this point you're thinking, ah, no, far, far too dark for me. Don't like that in the slightest. Just finish that corner off properly. Um, far too dark for me. Not a fan, which is exactly what I thought when I put the red on. Panic. Panic not. So here comes my trusty gel plate again. And I use this basically because it stops it going all over the work surface. When I use paint or ink or anything, I can use it on there, transfer it onto my project, kind of don't waste as much. And then I can always pick up the remnants using an extra layer of paint and pulling it off with paper or tissue or whatever I've got to hand. Anyway, so this is just basic white gesso, nothing complicated, nice and loose. Um, in case you're wondering, the one I've got here, it's the Liquitex, just goes on and on forever, frankly, and it's just in a very easy, easy bottle, but you can use whichever you have to hand. You're thinking, woman, what are you doing? You've just put all that ink on and now you're putting it white on top of it. Have you lost your mind? Well, no, because what I find happens with archival inks, and I haven't tried it with other inks, so I can't attest to what they do. What happens is you'd think it would go white, but no. The ink kind of bleeds through, so you get some of that aqua coming through, which is what happened with the red ink on my previous 
project was that the red turned a shade of pink and you'll see it starts off looking white but the colour develops as the ink starts to pile through that gesso and again I think you can do the same if you just put acrylic paint over the top um, the same kind of reaction will happen that ink being permanent ink and whatever it is that's in it and I don't know the chemical makeup of it um, but that that ink starts to the color starts to seep through to the forefront again and you end up with a a paler version of your aqua background and this to me starts to look far more like an old tablecloth in the sense that it's it's kind of been worn it's gone through the wash umpteen times oops that wasn't supposed to happen i think the paper's getting a touch wet so it's probably complaining at me bless it as i said this is dead cheap watercolor paper so i'm not surprised it's complaining but that's fine because it will get used now which it wouldn't have done before and if you go over in sections don't worry because that's kind of part of it it's supposed to look old and worn it's not supposed to look perfect if you go over with a lighter touch maybe then you're gonna just get the pattern coming through right yeah it's definitely complaining now so time to stop so there we go look there we are if i lift that up you can kind of see so the dots of gold some of that verdigris but then some of the some of the sandy color are coming through and as that ink starts to bleed through you're going to get more of a pale aqua as i said you can get the same effect with um with using a paint instead and just going over and then at least you've got the predictability but i quite like experimenting and seeing what happens and as i said it also means that if you try using your inks over the top um certainly your archival inks if you try using those over the top and panic as i did um, then you're going to find that by putting you can see there there's some of the deeper red and then this is where it's kind of gone pink and you get that really nice mottled effect and that will develop throughout on this now you can see i i was slightly lighter with my touch on this one i left some of the stronger reds throat showing through with this i've kind of gone more um more what i would call proper proper tablecloth um, and then what you would do is you would actually um, cover your cover your file folder actually when you haven't put it together so when it's still out flat um, this one I'm just using as a sample just to show you and we'll probably end up putting actually stamped pieces of eileen stuff all over it seems like a good idea just cut out and collaged i think or maybe you could put napkin on top or whatever if you've already gone ahead and put it together but if not you'll see on on my blog post as i said on pushing the right buttons blogspot.com how the paint will uh, sorry the paper will work really nice um if you put it sort of on on this on these surfaces cut it out add it before you then actually do the assembly part of things so i hope that you've enjoyed seeing that um i'm going to be doing a live with this or that's the plan with eileen so if you've got any questions if i've missed anything please um if you've said them in the comments um we'll be watching for them and if you've got any questions afterwards now is definitely the time to ask. OK. All right, let's. Uh, that was amazing, Jenny. Good. Yeah. Wow. wow. 
it looks much better when it's on screen. When you're stood there doing it, you're thinking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I a lot of people were like, when you had just the darker, which you said it was too dark, everybody's like, well, oh, oh, wait a minute, that's pretty good. <laughs> but I like how it kind of um, turns the white you know, just goes to the layer underneath and, and bleaches in and or whatever you call it. It was amazing. Thank you. Everybody's saying they're going to try. Really clear explanation. That's what I said. There was a question. I think Amy had a question about adhesives with putting it together. That was one that I saw. So do you want to talk about that? Yes. Yeah, so when, when you put the file folder itself together um hold it this way so when i constructed the 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 actual cover part i did use wet glue um but you can use tape i just think i tend to you know me belt and braces and and i just assume that if i'm making a sample that it's going to be handled by a thousand yeah. and one people when it goes it, out to shows so i tend to use nice strong um glue yeah um, so wet glue and the way you do so often on your lives um so i i tend to do that but as you could see i the other thing is really strong mm -hmm. double-sided adhesive right. will also work and if you're using it at home um and you're the only person who's going to be using it i doubt very much you're about to rip it apart every time you go into it so double-sided ad adhesive should work really well okay um, particularly because you're using you're you're not having to do all the scores when you're covering up the the, the um, scored part that would normally fold in several sections. You're covering that up, so it's it's pretty sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> and as I said, it would be, um, yeah, it it would be. Um, I would say something like a cereal box or yeah. something that kind of thing. That that sort of weight would work really well. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what you used? Was it? Um... I I used a, I used some craft card. I bought some oh, okay. um, A4 sheets of craft card okay. that were 350 GSM, oh, just okay. because I wanted something really really sturdy. So yeah. I said I think that's 130 pounds US. Yeah. Um, like a heavy water. Yeah. Paper. yeah. So, um, okay. so Darlene's uh, so who was asking? How did you emboss that large piece of paper with a small embossing folder so that it matched up? It yeah. didn't match up. <laughs> you it can't will tell. match up. And I think um, Susie explained. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe she could do a tutorial. Sorry, Susie. Oh, maybe she could do a tutorial about she matching. She would love to. Well, I've, to be honest, you know what? That's the kind of thing she's brilliant at. And she, is. She, she just, she has one of these kind of 3D minds that thinks that way, bless her yeah. heart. She just does it. So all I did was I went from one corner, then the other corner, and then flipped it round and did it on either side. I did use my um, Sizzix Pro, so I used right. the big one. Oh, the twin. So that I could do, I could put the whole A4 yeah, sheet okay. through. Yeah. Because otherwise, if you're using the, um, if you're using yeah. the, just the big shot, then right. you can only use half the sheet yeah. um, to put it all through. But it, I, I believe it will line up, but Susie would be the one. Basically, what you're trying to do is when you put it in place, you're because it's a really deep emboss, you're trying to line up your paper with the grooves that are already in there yeah. when you, you when you put it in place. But yeah, Susie would explain this a whole heap easier than me. So I just I just went for it. I just did the four corners and they look great. And, and that was it, really. What yeah. I would say, actually, is when I did do the four corners, I didn't use my full-size plate. I used my little yeah. um, Big Shot plate yeah. uh, with the big sh with the pro, pro and put it through. Right. I think so hopefully that helps. One little tip that I do is when I'm embossing um, something and I don't want those lines to come, you know, how the harsh lines when you... <laughs> Sorry. So when you are rolling it through, you take your plate and just back it up so that when you roll over it, it doesn't go like boom, you know, and come down on it. 
we could do and you've that. kind of got that option as well with the side haven't you because the pattern doesn't come all the way to the edges of the folder so you've got the same thing you can kind yeah. of yeah you just kind, kind of set a little so, yeah, yeah kind of fade i think instead of having yeah lines. yeah yeah Cool. But it's just just playing, and as I said, at the end of the day, if you do, well, there's so much going on with the color, you're not really noticing. I I did not see any lines in your but finished one. They are there, but as I said, you're chopping it up anyway, right? So yeah, makes no difference really. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, and I know, and Darlene liked it when it was darker, and that's cool. And that's the thing, everybody is different and they're, everybody's right. going to like different things. Yeah, and so, if you get it to where you like it and it's dark, use the dark. I mean, it's your folder, you know. I, I, could, thought, I'd I thought I'd take it that extra stage just because yeah. I was asked exactly how this one came along. And yeah. this one happened because, yeah, it was very in your face. Yeah. <laughs> I could see how it would be if it was that dark red, yeah. I'm yeah. afraid of red. I'll admit it. <laughs> oh well. It's it's good. I think it can be a touch overpowering unless you use it well. Yeah, so. which you did well and you kind of toned it down a little. Yeah. And that is nice about gesso, you know. Anything that you do too much, it's like, ah, oh, just put a little coat of even if it's just sketchy, it just blunts it a little. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. I you know, I didn't have gesso till about a couple of years ago. I didn't know what you did. I just thought it was the same as white paint, but it covers really nice. It's a little thicker. So the idea of gesso is, as my understanding, um, is that it's supposed to prep a surface ready yeah. for paint. Um, and it's also really good to, if you've got different types of surfaces and you're putting paint over them, they will react differently. But if you put a layer of gesso over the top of both of them or all of them, then yeah. you'll get a similar kind of reaction. Yeah. Is is the yeah? I, can't, I think that's kind of where it goes, which is why a lot of people like using clear gesso because you yeah. still get what's right. underneath, but then you get the. It, it, it's like when you stamp with ink on something. If you've got gesso on there, uh, again, you've got it. Kind of got a similar surface, so you're not going to get different reactions. Right, I. I was just See, thinking. Leslie knows. Yeah, Les <laughs> um, Leslie's our artistic pro. She yes, knows. She knows. She's <laughs> a watercolor. She can do it all. Uh, yeah. Hey, Wilma. Good to see you. Uh, Laura, that's exactly what I was thinking. What if you did like rainbow color and you had them on your, you know, and you put little titles of what it was? Like, oh, it would be beautiful. Yeah, that's genius. Yeah, so stacking them up. So having them, sealing them up and then having on the side what it is you've got in them and putting them yeah. away. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's very organized. I'm what not that organized, but I'm organized I'm enough to just put one in a box. <laughs> you did very well. And, you know, like I, I was thinking, like, I'm going on this retreat, you know, to Texas. And that would be handy to have all of my little bits you know, I know the, the project that I'm doing and I can put them all in one thing and take them on the road, you know, plus it's pretty. So and I, you can you can use it for things like you can put bits of fabric in there, you know, or bits of felt, you know, if you're stitching. Yeah. I know it's not it's not sealed at the bottom. So that bit there. But actually, I mean, unless you're going to start putting pins and needles in there. Yeah. Otherwise, but in which case you just attach them to your pieces of felt. Yeah, but put them in a little ziplock. Embroidery or... floss in there and, and your yeah. sewing kit bits in yeah. there and and away you go. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, I can see a lot. Or even receipts in your bag, you know. I, that's kind of pretty. I probably wouldn't put that in there. <laughs> As somebody who's been doing my taxes, I don't, yeah, I'm not talking receipts today. <laughs> Oh. I've been told it's time to start that, but I have rejected it so far. Uh, <laughs> hey, Karen Beers. Woohoo, Karen. Yes, I was I was definitely ch channeling my inner Karen Beers there. <laughs> yeah, you what have to watch Karen. Glue on the bottom would work. It might do. It, it It's worth a try. I yeah. mean, I, I just, I just kind of, yeah, I, I'm aware of this a little. 
I'm, I'm aware that there's movement in the bottom of right. it as you open and close. That's yeah. that's the only thing. Yeah. But because um, it pulls up, I guess it's that's the book binder in me that knows that you need kind of flexibility on a spine. But it it could do. It's Leslie. Over to you. She could do it. Well, you could just take a strip, it's Leslie, or take a strip of paper. Well, no, you couldn't because it's folded. But I was thinking to just kind of attach it to the bottom and keep that together. But someone it wouldn't work. Never mind. <laughs> oh she, yes, let L Leslie worry about it. It's a challenge for her. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> My brain is full, guys. I have nothing. So I'm so glad that Jenny came today. And also, I know how much you guys wanted to see that. So I think that, like you said, um, somebody said in the comments, it was so clear. There are hardly any questions. You explained it all so well. Um, Laura says it beats her tall stack of paper plates with little bits of things on each. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've used coffee filters. I've <laughs> Ah, yeah, no, but having everything stacked up, I get that entirely actually because yeah. I have got I have got piles literally of stuff that's on yeah. the go. And the trouble is if they're small, I know. they're falling all over the place. And actually all of those scraps were in an envelope from something you'd sent me in the post. So it was in oh. my Eileen envelope, but oh. the envelope had got so full it was in in danger of falling out. Whereas at least with that you can seal it up, which is yeah. the good thing. So it, you can kind of trap it all in there, which is good. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you could make it wider, too, um, if you just stacked another spine in there, you know? Yeah. Or just yeah. just took your, like a book binding almost, where you separated the front and back, put in your strip, and just made it as long as you want. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You so can keep going. Always, always ways to expand. Well, yeah, if you... Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, if all you need to do is you're taking that out or you just add a second one on right. and yeah. a second one on on the other side, just yeah. add extra side, use the base and then yeah. add extra card to it. Yeah. Right. As you say, use tape on either side. Yeah. Would it be feasible to make the journal part of the mat board and card for the concertina? Yeah, it would be. Yes, it would be. Yeah, sure, you can because do that. Because that's that structure is solid mm -hmm. and it's there that needs to be flexible. So right. yes, you could do it from from that board. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. one from the um, texture roll, but I made a little purse out of it when Trinity was here one time, or Nora. So I think I actually have a tutorial in my YouTube. There was a three part one. So if anybody wants to watch and see. Um, it's a cool idea, and you can use it for a lot of different things. But I love that for just the a little bit. Be brilliant. And the other thing you could do is so in the in the part there where you've got that. Hang on a minute. Let me show you the on the unfull one. So on the part that you've got joined to the front mm -hmm. or the back, you could actually stitch that. Oh yeah. Down here. And then at the back as well, you could stitch yes. on this side and on on that side there. Yeah. And the same on this stitch. Right. Stitch front and back. If you've got something, if you've made it from, um, yeah, that that um, texture roll. And that really yeah. is flexible then. It's yeah. nice and touchy-feely. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's more. Yeah. Darlene says this would go great. Let's see. With the embellishment box, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That don't fit in the acrylic. That's true. Oh, yeah. good idea, yeah, Darlene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing. You get in the mindset and everybody's like, ah, you could do this, that, ah. You know, I think that's what this group is all about. So. Well, yeah, whatever you come up with, have a, have a play. Yeah. It would be lovely to see because there's only so many hours in a day um to be able to make all of this stuff so it's the idea is to as you know we produce these things as the team produces stuff just to kind of get people's ideas flowing and then you guys just run with it we know you do yeah we time. see and, and, and just well 
let's make it from let's see what happens yes yeah so, yeah yeah That's great oh i wanted to say hi to dorothy because she just got home so i'm glad you made it dorothy just in time to miss the stream you can watch on replay this was a good one dorothy <laughs> no not a regular one make sure you watch this one <laughs> yes Hey, we get lots from the regular ones, behave. Well. We do. <laughs> it's fun to have a guest, I will say that. Because it's fun to see what how everybody does things, you know? And that's just just how we all get our ideas. So yeah. you you might have done one thing in here that gave somebody an idea that would take them off on a whole different route. So I want to thank you for that. All right. Charlotte I, is, I agree with Charlotta. Every live is a good one. You're too kind. They are. they are. Yeah, well. And I was thinking with the ATCs as well. So I'm in the process of putting together. This is my, the. I showed it back in January. So this is a bit oh, of a sneak peek. It's this one. Oh, you boy. can't see all of it yet. Oh. Um but inside, so I'm I'm turning this into something of a Valentine's. Aww. So it, it's kind of, it's a, well, an alternative Valentine's. The idea okay. is this is going to be um, home is where the heart is because, nice. yeah, that kind of means quite a lot to me right now. Mm. Um, so I'm making just tiny little, um, little ink, well, booklets that just flip inside and then just messing around with painted pages but also fabric pages and it just got me started thinking well with something of these size that fits in because you don't have to have full size a5 sheets or whatever inside that new journal right. it's such a great size so these pages hold on ruler as always keep the trusty ruler this is so, charlotta <laughs> so these pages are kind of about uh, four and a half by five and three quarters there or thereabout so that's in centimeters that's about ten and a half centimeters by fourteen and a half um so making booklets that i'm then going to slip inside there mm -hmm. and i just thought this is the ideal size you know for putting your atcs on yes so when you get your atcs or when you've made a bunch of them yeah you're sending them out and you're swapping right. them and all the yeah then what you can you and if you've made a couple in the series put start putting them in there yeah and you've got a whole collection you know other pages where you can write about who you got them from and um right. what happened what the event was and what was going on in your life at the time yes just, that's kind of how journals happen yes you know that just gave me an idea that you know i mean we were going to do this swap to see how it went but if it works out, we could do the next theme could be doing fabric ATCs. And then we all do fabric. And, you know, we have a little section in our book for all the fabric ATCs that we make. And then maybe next time we have another theme and we could have whole journals full of themed ATCs from our group. I think that would be so cool. And we have the journals to put them in. So. And before anybody out there panics and says, I can't sew, you can die cut, pay, um, die cut fabric. Fabric, that's right, on your big okay. shots with your exactly. dies that you already have. Yes. Double-sided adhesive on the back of a, a piece of um, fabric, you just treat it like it's paper. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. All right. Leslie says yes. Leslie says yes to everything, and that's why we love her. <laughs> no, we love everybody. This is a great group. So Linda's waiting for hers. Oh, she ordered from Create. Oh, very good. Love that. Michelle suggested putting a little handle across the top. Yes, that would be that, cool to hold that it. That just turns it into like a little, little purse. Little briefcase. Oh, a little purse. All right, oh, Michelle, you have to do that. Cute. Michelle is the one I loved when she did this. We were had our retreat, and she she was staying with her mom, I think, and she went to the dollar store. And she got a bunch of stuff and she translated the classes that she was doing using Dollar Tree stuff. It was it was just amazing to see. I love that. So, you know, you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff. You, we all have plenty of stuff, you know. So just use what you have 
Fabric, yes. Fabric, Teresita's in. All right, Helen Lin got her. Linda was saying there, Linda, I, great, I can cross stitch, not sew. Yep. Oh, cross stitching. Yeah. So yeah. Crosses. Again, sorry, it's difficult showing light in the. Yeah, I know. The classroom. It's, it's, yeah, it's dark over here. It's horrible. It's pretty. But anyway, you'll get to see. I, I do a lot of just crosses and straight lines, just up and down, up and down stitching. Yeah, the slow stitching. Um, Lisa says, has anyone mentioned the pocket notebook pages? Oh, <gasps> no, Lisa. Okay, if you have the pocket notebook die, the page element will fit in, then that makes total sense. I just hadn't tried that yet. Amazing. Thank you, Lisa. All right, and here's something from Dorothy. You could cover it with tea bag paper. I've been to a talk about that tonight. You know, I have heard, and I know Jenny Atkinson does a lot with tea bags and dyeing things and, you know. Um, and you, you can get actual tea bag paper that hasn't been dyed. I've got some, yeah. surprisingly enough. I some too. Yeah. I Brilliant. didn't really know what to do with it, but um, Sheila's making a passport journals. The pages hold one ATC. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. To be you honest, know, I think ATCs would go in everything, all of your journals, much. apart from the mini, the tiny wee right, one. Yeah. But it could go sideways. Maybe two and a half by three and a half. No, it's too small, too big. It would hang out, but that's all right. Yeah. It's fun, guys. All right. Well, I don't want to hold everybody up. We're at our hour, so I can't believe I ever tried to do a half an hour and think that that could work. <laughs> Oh, well, we, we're good on the hour here. So thanks, everybody. Laura's all now. She's freaking out about the tea bag paper by itself. It is so soft. And I got some at, at um, Giant, our, our local um, store. They're folded into tea bag, uh, but you put the tea in it is what it's designed for. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Sandy, many, many thanks. Before you go, Sandy's asked a quick question. Oh, sorry. What did Will you, you have a kit for the Bellicon yes. retreat? This month? Sandy, yes. I have one that's listed already in my Etsy store, and I have another one I'm hoping to put up tonight. So go ahead over and take a look. Thank you. And I hope a lot of you guys are coming. We are going to have such a good time. So that's um, in February. That's a virtual retreat. So go check it out. And um, again, Jenny, thank you so much for sharing your inspiration and creativity with us. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I know everyone else does too. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for being here. Yeah, we loved it. It was amazing. All right. Thanks guys. See you on Tuesday. I'm going to be with some friends, but I think I have an idea of what we're going to do. So stay tuned. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye.